tell me. I hear you. Is it you? Is it you? I hear you. Okay. Welcome. I'm Frida Wan here in God.tv. This is a outreach I do of just a weekly prayer session. Uh, have a lot of great uh, folks at uh, hearinggod.proborgs.com, a little forum I started, so that other people could join in on the prayer thing too. That's available if you want to go there, um, post a prayer request anytime during the week, and people will just pray for you all week long. And then this is just kind of our little thing of where we just kind of pray and agree together. And so I just... Thank the Lord for all he's doing. We just thank you, Jesus. We just turn this time over to you. We turn this time over to you. We just ask, Lord Jesus, that you would have your way in this gathering today. We, we, we yield ourselves to you, Lord God, as your vessels. Lord God, we just ask that you would just use us, use our giftings to our full potential. Help us to open up to you and your perfect will. Just thank and praise you, Jesus. We pray all this in your name. Amen. Yeah, I'm good, Liz. <laughs> all right. I want to start off with a little bit of... Um, uh, some praise report stuff. Let me go down here. Went too far. Okay. Here's a cool one. Um, Salt and Light, who was on here um, asking for some prayer regarding. Uh, you know, she was enduring lies, character assassination, bullying. She ended up resigning, um, you know, the stress of it all. Anyhow, she had, on Thursday, uh, she had a tribunal meeting over all of this. And, and so we were um, praying for, for favor and that uh, anything, you know, these lies, whatever, just be exposed. And so she she put a little note on the on uh, last week's video um, on YouTube and said, "Hey, it went great." And then uh, she put it up on the uh, the forum as well. And then I think she got to thinking about, "Wow, this this really was an amazing thing." Um, so she wanted to elaborate some more about it. She said, you should know that something quite supernatural happened in that courtroom on Thursday. I am absolutely convinced of it. God seemed to give me an overwhelming favor with the judge who supported the case on all accounts as being strong enough to pursue to a final hearing. The facts were being exposed just as we prayed for. I was still quite nervous but calm. But I had this awareness that I had submitted it all to God and he was in control. Previous to this, I had been advised many times that my case was weak and didn't stand much chance at all. Can you see why she's really praising God? The God of impossibilities. Awesome. I now have been given some options regarding where to take this next. Um, she's asking for prayer that she will make whatever decision is it within the will and in alignment with God to glorify him. Um, many people are watching to see what happens. So, um, and she wants to continue to trust him throughout all this. Um, she has until... Um, March 1st to decide um, her choices that she has. So, really cool. Wanted to share that awesome, more in depth uh, testimonial with you because um, that is really exciting because <laughs> it totally is on the things that, that were prayed about. Um, so, I gets me all, <laughs> gets me all excited inside. Um, so, uh, Lord God, 
we just thank you. We praise you for going on behalf of, of what seems to be a, a very trying and, and just a, a ordeal, you know, that uh, is not fun. But uh, she put her trust in you, and I thank you. I thank you that you would just continue to anoint uh, salt and light over this. That you would give her that unfailing strength to stand and to trust you. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you are doing in her life. I thank you that all of this does indeed glorify your holy name. I thank and praise you, Lord Jesus, for her witness and her stand for you. And I declare that the favor continues. That un complete understanding is on her side. I thank you, Lord God. Even now, you send forth your angels to go and prepare the way. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that she will indeed make the right decision. And that you will give her that victory. I thank and praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Kind of makes me shake inside. <laughs> it's awesome. Yay! Okay. Um, I want to share with you, last night I had a dream of fixing cleaning appliances. Um, like one was a screen on a dishwasher, uh, you know, it wasn't something that would really be in a dishwasher, but it made me think of like a screen that would filter out gunk. And then I saw a sweeper, and there was a guy trying to f see if he could fix it or whatever. And so it's very plain to see that... Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. That um, I'm just exhorting everyone to continue pressing into clean house. Uh, fix all those things. Um, work on those things that will help you work on getting your wedding garment ready. Um, press in. Press in. Uh, I just I thank and praise the Lord. Um, I know it's getting close. It's getting close. And he's just encouraging us the whole way. It's just be excellent. Be excellent uh, as he is. So um, I want to share that with you. Um, and then I also I got this uh, scripture this morning. Let me make it a little bit bigger on my screen so I can read it easier. Oops. It's in Deuteronomy 6. It's in Deuteronomy 6. Okay, and Liz said, for the last thing, as I was listening, I had this thought in my mind, her case is just as strong as her faith is. So I wanted to share that because that's what's awesome is you guys get to input when the Lord speaks to you things or you see a vision or whatever, share it, and uh, I'll add it in. Cool. So Deuteronomy 6. Um, I think I'm doing to verse, I don't know, 13 or something. Uh, anyhow, now this is the commandment, the statutes and the judgments with the Lord, which the Lord your God has commanded me to teach you, that you might do them in the land where you are going over to possess it, so that you and your son and your grandson might fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you all the days of your life, and, the day, and your days may be prolonged. O oh, Israel, you should listen and be careful to do it, that it may be well with you, and that you may multiply greatly, just as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you in a land flowing with milk and honey. And this is the key verse that I heard in my head this morning. Hear, O oh, Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. That's so powerful. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your might. These words which I am commanding you today 
shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your sons and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. Just all the time. Awesome. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. You shall write them on your door doorposts of your house and on your gates. Then it shall come about when the Lord your God brings you into the land which he swore to your fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give you great and splendid cities which you did not build and houses full of all good things which you did not fill and hewn cisterns which you did not dig, vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant and you eat and are satisfied. Then watch yourself that you do not forget the Lord who brought you from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery. You shall fear only the Lord your God, and you shall worship him and swear by his name. Of course, you could go to the end of that paragraph if you want to. <laughs> I'm going to stop right now. But uh, awesome scripture. And, you know, since we're mentioning Israel, how appropriate is it? is it to um, just we just call on uh, your sovereign name Jesus regarding the your people Israel we pray for peace Israel we just ask, Lord Jesus, that you will continue to move your mighty hand, your perfect will over the nation of Israel. We pray for all the leaders there. We pray peace and safety, protection and provision in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's skip over here to uh, Dylan had a prayer request um, for his uncle's father okay um, okay your uncle's father okay the father has depression and sometimes when you go over to visit he sometimes has a bad mood and temper um, okay. I thank and praise you, Lord Jesus. That Dylan is your your vessel. Brebeke is your Ark of the Covenant. I thank you, Lord God, that everywhere that Dylan treads, that the peace of Christ flow out. And rest on all those in his presence because he is your child. I thank you for his witness and all he stands for in you, Lord Jesus, that he is that joy everywhere he goes. We pray for uh, his uncle's father. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you would send forth your angels and your witnesses into his midst. That he would have the realization that uh, of, of what abundant life is. We just bind up that depression from operation. And we plead your, your presence to overshadow that your joy may infiltrate the atmosphere there and that that peace may flow alright Check my rubber keeper cut up the chair. All right. Um, the the bitterness versus video that I just did last week on the Freedom Zone one. 
uh, channel. Um, I, that was kind of impacting to someone, and, and they said, hey, I'm still somewhat bitter towards my ex-girlfriend and her new boyfriend, which happens to be his friend. He says, I want to forgive them, so I thought about blocking them so I can forget. The sooner I forget, the sooner I forgive. Is that an acceptable strategy, or should I forgive them now? You know, it's, it's hard. I just wanted to share my reply. Um, even before we were, Jesus' death paid our way, and he told us to forgive 70 times 7. And also said if we don't forgive, we won't be forgiven. So if we died tonight purposing to forgive when we feel we can, would we be in trouble? You know, it's, it's okay that forgiveness is a process, and they might have offended us one time, and we are the ones having to go back and claim that forgiveness 70 times 7. But we have to try. So I'm encouraging them not to block them as per, if you remember, if, if you've seen it, um, uh, the part where it went for hatred, the description for hatred, it talked about, uh, I can't even be in the same room as you, you know. And this is hard, too, because you think hatred is a really harsh word. You think violence is a really harsh word and resentment and all these things are really harsh. But when you put that, oh, I can't even be in the same room with you, how many times have we been wounded or hurt by somebody and then we wouldn't go to that event that that person was at because we were planning on going, but then we found out, oh, so-and-so is going. Oh, then you change your mind. I am so guilty of that. I would rather avoid, you know, it, in my past, I would rather avoid than to be in their presence and to have that, eh, you know, oh, my gosh, they're there, that kind of thing. So this is some really good things that, you know, the Lord wants us to clean house. And that's the thing about forgiveness is just, it's an ongoing thing. Um, an ongoing thing that we just have to, you know, it, it's not a thing of feeling. It's Forgiving isn't a warm and fuzzy thing that you say it and all of a sudden you feel better. It's, it's not necessarily that. It can be that. But there's no guarantee that it's going to be. So, okay. Um, Liz, it's hard for me to pay attention because that's just another screen. <laughs> the private chat thing. If you if you just do it in the uh, the normal chat, I'd be able to pay attention. I get so many things I'm looking at at the same time, so that would be helpful if you just do it there. Just a little helper thing. Um, so anyhow, I just I just wanted to share that because um, yeah, the forgiveness thing is hard, but that is a big deal with the whole cleaning our wedding garments and being ready because we know darn well that if we don't forgive we won't be forgiven. So that's a big, it's a big thing on, on his to-do list for us to take serious of. So, um, okay. Um, another thing this week, um, uh, I had someone share with me. They shared, you know, and I want to talk more about the forgiveness thing. Um, they shared that they were a director of an international ministry for 14 days. Bef right before they began to, uh, you know, direct it, they were in this uh, church for over 20 years. So it's kind of like they, they were lifted up and put in this position but what they found is the moment they went into that position was there was greed and jealousy. It's like all these 
nasty things that are up in the in the higher hierarchy cut exposed and so it's like the blinders kind of came off and the the moments you know you're in the presence of this kind of stuff and you maybe say something or ruffle the waters about it well like i said he he said he was running it for 14 days and then they uh immediately pushed him out so the amount of pain for instances like that i mean to to be in a community for 20 years or more and you know i could understand if you couldn't handle the position or whatever if you were inadequate but um <laughs> when you start to say hey what about this and what about that and you get smacked um there there's some wounding there so um uh, he admits the greatest persecution he's experienced has come from other Christians. So I know there's a lot of you out there that are like, oh yeah, me too. Because <laughs> it's hard. Um, when, the, when the veils come off your eyes, uh, the baptism in the Holy Spirit is that key thing. Uh, when the Holy Spirit comes and resides inside, and you begin to move for God things get exposed in your presence and um, so uh, suddenly the <laughs> things are different so I just want to pray for this one and for anyone that um, may be still getting over some of um, the, the hardness of it you know um, because it's it's a hard thing um, being wounded by your friends, essentially. Um, so we just thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank and praise you, Lord Jesus. That even you were wounded at the table of your friends. Thank and praise you, Lord Jesus. I invite you in to heal any wound that that we have suffered at the hands of our friends and we thank and praise you Lord Jesus for for your amazing revelation forgive them father for they know not what they do I thank and praise you Lord Jesus that we can see that it is the enemy's influence that we love the people but we hate the sin so we just pray for all of those that have wounded us, who have used us, uh, who have ridiculed us, any unfairness against us, Lord Jesus, we just place all those people at your footstool, Lord Jesus. We, we turn it over to you and we declare we forgive. We forgive. We receive uh, your forgiveness over us, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God, that you bridge us and you restore us to the Father. Thank you and praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your healing power. Thank you for healing us and dispatching us out. That we may continue to be a light to the world. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Okay. Oh, I'm going to read some of this here. Praise you, Jesus. Sure, James, you can be on there or on the YouTube. Okay, okay Liz is saying uh, in her experience, the more it hurts, the more you force yourself to forgive as fast as you can because it's a huge step towards healing 
and accompany forgiving with a prayer for those that were wrong because God is also using their mistake that was against you to teach and guide you. Yep. All right. Let me check. Uh, if you have any uh, prayer requests, obviously, if you're on YouTube or on Google Plus, you can just go ahead and text it in or um, info at hearinggod.tv. Okay, so let me look at my windows here. Um, okay, um, Ginger has a friend uh, named Selena, and uh, we prayed for her, and she's she has two family members that have the heart trouble, and I guess um, Selena has been going through some some depression, and it, it's just been hard, and um, you know, uh, Rebecca, Rebecca and, G and Ginger's a good friend, <laughs> good friend. So we just want to continue to pray for Selena, and I thank and praise you. Sorry, I got I got baby chicks in the background. <laughs> if if you hear tweeting sounds, Rebecca, <laughs> I thank and praise you, Lord Jesus, for Ginger, and I just thank you, Lord God that you would guide her and show her the best way that she can pray and lift up Selena the best way that she can be there to support her also pray for Ginger um, she's had some she had a car accident I don't know how long ago but she said that she's had back pain. And so I gave her a link for the um, one of the Joan Hunter videos that I put up on the Freedoms on One Hearing God channel, or the Freedoms on One YouTube channel, um, that's a prayer uh, against pain and trauma. Um, you know, you, you can be completely innocent in an accident um, but because it's such a sudden thing, a sudden shock, um, immediately the enemy will uh, try to get you, you know, if the other person caused it, try to get you angry and unforgiveness versus the other person, will try and get you to think that, oh, you have irreparable damage done to you. Um, it's just a very sensitive time uh, in any kind of accident situation of where uh, the enemy takes advantage of you and your weaknesses and he'll jump right in there and try and throw all kinds of things at you um, if you cause the accident he can throw guilt and um, just so many things can happen so quick and anything we align with whether it's true or not, <laughs> um, the enemy will have that legal authority to just say, this person's mine. Um, you know, they, they complain about this pain all the time, and uh, they're not claiming healing. You know, they're not claiming the word. And, and that's the hard thing is, you know, we have to go through this whole thing not focusing on the feelings. Um, it's the word, the faithfulness of God. That has to be way above anything else. And you just, you know, Abraham, the faithfulness of God. He took his son up on that mountain, ready to sacrifice him. He had that kind of faithfulness, and God provided. So that is a very powerful, if you are standing and wanting a healing, that is such a powerful image that you will just continue to press on and say, God, I am going to stand by your word and your promises and your truth above anything else I see. 
and you just cling to that. Um, you know, sometimes I've heard testimonies of people where they talk about where they have this dramatic dip where things are even worse than ever before right before they come out the other side and they get this miraculous healing. That is such a awesome testimony. I'm so glad for people that cry out their testimonies of that because you know those those big ones, you know, but we can use those in our in the small things in life too. How many how many times do we sit there and just just decide, uh, I'm just going to be this way. And it could be just some annoying area and you just decide you're going to live with it. And we can't do that. Can't do that. Okay. Um, all right. Let me see where I was leaving off. Okay, so I want to pray for Ginger's back. <laughs> and then I have one more thing for Ginger, and then I'm going to look at some other prayer stuff and, and stuff people are writing. Um, so, Lord God, we just, uh, we just place our hand out over Ginger's back. Mi bade son tatia kana aharia shonte dere sembera tikina bakora bake brase. We command the enemy off. Bebe shi kana baka. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bind up pain and any spirits of trauma that would try to anchor this thing there and to cause her grief. Mebe shukin kana baka repaka. Ginger aligns with this. We know she doesn't want this anymore. So we bind it in the mighty name of Jesus. We command trauma and pain to go beneath the footstool of Jesus Christ for judgment. We speak to those muscles. We speak life into those muscles. The tendons. Everything, all the connective tissue, we speak the life of Jesus into all of that. We speak restoration, restoration and healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, um, now I'll pray for her husband. Um, he was taken to the, he went to the hospital, was a, fearful it was a heart attack. It wasn't, it was pleurisy. And he is in a very stressful kind of job situation, which might have exasperated the whole thing. Um, so we would just want to continue to claim complete healing from this pleurisy thing. We speak to those lungs. No irritation in the mighty name of Jesus. We bind up any sharp pains in the name of Jesus. We speak blessing over him and his job stuff. Whether he's to continue on and to uh, dig deep and to see what 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 the manifestations are in the physical is that a root of something that's going on in the spiritual that he needs to address that he needs to cleanse that he needs to purify in his own life we declare that he can whether it's to stay or to go we thank you, Lord God, that you will direct him and guide him and lead him into all truth. I thank you, Lord Jesus. We pray your peace, your peace, that he may be still and know that you are God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are handling it. Also honor him, Lord Jesus, as the, as the man of the house. I just thank and praise you for a godly man, who trusts in you. Thank you, Jesus. All right. All right. Let me check what you got here.
Is there a waiting time before you get to speak in tongues? You know, there, there's there been people I've heard that have spent, I, I'm trying to remember how many months that John Fenn pressed in. I want to say like eight or nine months. I, I thought it was like quite a while. Um, it's different for everybody. Um, sometimes people receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit and are boom, speaking in tongues right then and there. Me... I was at a as I was at a healing mass. That's back when I was Catholic. Uh, the Catholic the it, within the Catholic Church, there's a movement called the Catholic Charismatic Renewal, and it burst out when the whole charismatic movement, all in general, was birthed. And it's cool. Um, because, you know, I, I see God in, like, all the denominations, you know. There's stuff hiding, but, you know, when it's on the news, all you, you see plastered is just bad stuff. And this one believes this, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But anyhow, uh, within the Catholic Church, there is this baptism in the Holy Spirit kind of movement. And I went to a healing mass and boom I got baptized in the Holy Spirit I had an amazing um, when I got prayed over I got uh, the deep sorrow and just like the cleansing uh, I was just crying I was crying so loud that my family was embarrassed <laughs> um, they took me out out of the sanctuary because they were so embarrassed because I was just it was such a m massive thing uh, I could feel stuff just melting off of me. And then it, it wasn't till sometime at, later, I, I can't even tell you uh, how much longer, whether it was weeks or a month or two or something, but I would start to go to the local um, um, prayer group, uh, and that was just people that went were part of the charismatic Catholic thing. Um, little groups from each church would would have you know meetings, and in there you know nobody pushed me. Nobody said, "Oh, you got to speak in tongues and and whatever." They would just have a, a kind of a prayer time, and um, everybody was praying and. Um, all of a sudden my tongue just felt weird and I was just repeating I praise you Jesus or something like that and then the tongues just started coming and you know I felt so stupid because I was trying to talk and you know they were encouraging me to keep going because a lot of people when that happens it's like they they stop they want to control themselves you know and that's why a lot of this, it's hard because society and the rest of the church programs you that it's weird and whatever, but God uses the foolish things to shame the wise, doesn't he? So it's a really a humbling experience. And like John Fenn admitted, very intellectual. And so it was very hard for him to let go. And so for some people, it just matters, you know, everybody's different. Um, and like I, I have in that video on YouTube, um, help in receiving the gift of tongues, I believe that's what it's, it's called. But I go through, you know, common blocks. There are blockages, um, especially if you have any occult ties. Um, the occult, you know, you know, Oh, Israel, our God is one. <laughs> that is such a big thing. And so when there's other gods, you know, God stresses, he's the one. He's a jealous. If you would read down a little bit further, it talks about in the Deuteronomy 6, after verse 13, it talks about how he's a very jealous guy. Um, and so any occultic things really need to spiritually house clean 
And some of those things uh, can be uh, generational curses. So things to look into. Um, the Spiritual House Cleaning series on YouTube. You can look it up, Spiritual House Cleaning. Um, and my videos will come up. I have a set of 12 of them. And it's basically me sharing everything I did. And so um, I was so excited through the process because um, <laughs> it worked. Yay. <laughs> um, so anyhow, um, the, the thing is, is pressing in, just aligning with, with God's truth on the matter and, you know, reading, reading the scriptures of all the instances about tongues. Um, and just continuing to declare. Um, there's also a really great um, Derek Prince teaching video series. I think it's like three videos, and I actually list it in the Spiritual House Cleaning series um, because I'm not real big into reinventing the wheel. Um, so uh, I, I can't top what his, uh, what his teaching was because it was so in-depth. So I encourage people, you know, watch that because his big thing is, is, you know, if if we ask for a good thing, you know, God isn't going to give us a, a wrong thing. So if we ask for things that are in the Word, He encourages us to, <laughs> you know, uh, seek the greater gifts. You know, it's okay to want those things. And some things we have to step out and partake and participate in and step out in faith. Um, so it's good. So... Yeah. Let me let me read the uh, comments here. Okay. Um Amor, you have the rash. Um yeah, we're not going to give up on that. Let's keep pressing in about it. Let's pray for that rash. On her arm. Lord Jesus, I thank you for my sister. I call forth your Holy Spirit to purify her flesh and make it new. I speak the name of Jesus over that rash. And I command that skin to obey. That in that he healed them all. I praise you, Jesus. I ask, Lord Jesus, that you would just expose any anything that would try to anchor this thing there. I pray there would be nothing left. Uh, for the enemy to hold on to. In the mighty name of Jesus. Call forth your power, Lord Jesus. Your power over her life. Thank you. I just bless her. And bless her children. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless her and strengthen her as she uh, raises up her children in the way that they should go. Thank and praise you, Jesus. Okay. Um, okay. Sorry, I'm a little behind on reading stuff. <laughs> Amen. Um, yeah, the whole tongue saying is is perfect prayer. 
um, you know, it's really funny. Uh, you know, if you if I'd have thought about it years ago, uh, I, I would have thought it's weird. But I speak in tongues every single day, and it's most of it is I'm just it just comes out, not really so conscious. I'm just doing some kind of anything any you know laundry or whatever and I just start doing it um, and it's it's pretty awesome um, uh, you know God will just use us and you know it's not like I always know what I'm saying sometimes he's just he just needs a, a mouth <laughs> just to speak something into the atmosphere so it's really cool um, we, we think about it that way. So we will just pray <laughs> for those looking for the gifting of tongues to flow, manifest. Um, I thank and praise you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for those that desire this gifting to desire earnestly the greater gifts we lift up our hands to you we submit ourselves to you Lord Jesus we thank and praise you for all that you are and all of your promises and we declare Lord Jesus that we are yours we surrender to you, Jesus. And we invite in your most Holy Spirit to come flood, flow, and pour out of us. We thank and praise you for your word, Lord Jesus. Thank and praise you that Paul... Uh, said, you know, I, I pray in tongues more than you all. <laughs> and Lord Jesus, we want to move in everything that you have for us. So Lord God, we call forth your fire. We speak forth release. And we surrender to you, Holy Spirit. We receive the gifting of tongues in the mighty name of Jesus. And as I do this, you can just be praising the Lord. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. Sikira karaba karabora ndaraba karabake. Brabe rotora bokora bakira bakaraba kare daraba kuna. When I'm focusing on the Lord, surrendering to Him and praising and worshiping Him, that's where it comes from. That's where it comes from. We're not. We're not focused on the gift and oh I want this gift and stuff but when you're praising him and worshiping him that's when I find it it really pours okay Andy says well you know when you feel the presence of God I concentrate on that and pray and it's praise that goes through my mind if anything but sometimes other stuff on a kind of parallel so Amen. All right. I believe I need to open up the forum prayer stuff to praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. 
right, unless you mentioned on the on the prayer request stuff that you took the spiritual giftings test and you're not sure that it's conclusive to you now. Well, that's the thing where you kind of write it out on the wall and then you just pray about it. Um, we know that that uh, doing that sort of thing, we have to be brutally honest um, so that we don't end up, you know, like everybody's like, oh, being the prophet is the best thing. So when you see a prophetic question, your temptation is to go, oh, and, and you know, I'm not saying that about you, but... Um, you know, I, I can remember when I'd take the test and I would look and I would say, oh, I know what, what one that's targeting, but I have to be honest, you know, and I would like that, but that's not what it really is. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, um, but when we write it out and then we just begin to pray and we say, Lord, um, if if this is if this is me, stretch me, enlarge me, uh, use me, uh, grow this gifting. And then there's other things too. Um, you can study. Um, authors out there have some very valuable um, books and whatnot, where uh, you can focus on like their main thing. Uh, is is like maybe one one facet of of that gifting and so you can kind of learn and, and mentor from 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 a person um, I I tell people how encouraged that I was from reading the works of Smith Wigglesworth and obviously you know I talk about Derek Prince a lot um, but when you pull on the revelation that our forefathers in the faith have been given by the Lord. When you pull on those things, um, that that same kind of mantle, if you want to call it, kind of flows on you as well. And of course, it's it's based on your desire. You know, if you if you have a desire, you you so want to see people healed. You begin to study people who have, you know, moves of God where there is massive healing or, you know, m musically, you know, musicians out there that have an anointing on their music that just heals people and stuff. You know, it's like only you know what really touches you. And you just have to focus, you know, yeah, the spiritual gifting test is great. But if there's also things that you just know um, that uh, are a burden on your heart, um, go for it and ask the Lord to lead you, and He will. He'll do it. So, okay. Okay, um, so anyhow, I'll get back to this. Uh, Andy's next. Um, he, he said he knew he needed to pray for some, but not many people came up for prayer. And then he was chatting with a guy who wasn't a churchgoer. Uh, his name's Martin, whose wife was in uh, to um, do one of those love locks or whatever for charity. Um, and he got to talking with him, found out he has a brain tumor, and the diagnosis is terminal. So when he was talking with him, um, Martin agreed for prayer. So uh, we'll, we will fuse in with the ministry that Andy's been doing, did with Martin, uh, not knowing if we're going to see him again, but we... God's prayers transcend space and time, and we just add to it. So we will pray um, for the headaches to go and the tumor to go. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, and we praise you that this was a divine appointment. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you. Your hand goes out over Martin. 
We speak to the root of these headaches. We ask the root in the mighty name of Jesus. Tumor, we command you to shrink in the name of Jesus. We claim healing over his brain in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever the chemistry is there, we just ask for a balancing of the chemicals in the brain so that this tumor will shrink to nothing in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak to that tissue. We speak Jesus into that brain. Brabaga, death, we bind you in the mighty name of Jesus. We command you go the foot soul of Jesus Christ for judgment. We speak life. We speak life and health. Jesus, Jesus, we speak that this go forth. We ask your warring angels to carry out what we are praying right now in the name of Jesus. For healing, complete restoration, complete restoration in the name of Jesus. She can keep the gap. Keep praying on this throughout the week. When I first started praying, I saw like a, a walnut, dark and stuff. As we've been praying, I've been seeing more and more, more turning into like gray matter, like flesh and stuff. There's still something hanging there. It's this war, um, but it's improved. It's better. We declare those headaches to go out in the name of Jesus, seeking a God of Okonebeke, that he may marvel, that he may see your hand in his life, that the headaches are even decreasing right now in the name of Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. All right. Um, awesome. Yeah, that needs that needs some prayer. I have to put that up again on the for next week too, because I just really feel. There's, there's activity. I'm excited. There's activity with that one. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Okay. Um, a, a guy on YouTube said, I need the Lord himself to work humility in me because the more I walk with him, the more I see how proud I've been and the more I see how desperately I need him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for that desire for humility. We all join in with that. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you. I just ask that you would just bless this one. As it desires to seek you, Lord Jesus, Rebecca, and not be proud, but to be obedient to you, Lord Jesus. How many of us so desire to be in line with your perfect will? We know we can be used of you when we are obedient to you. So I thank you, praise you, Lord Jesus. We all seek this. We all seek this, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Okay, um, I had a, a prayer request from Jamie. Um, they've had miscarriages um, of babies, and she's pregnant again. And so um, she's uh, pleading for protection for the baby, uh, the baby to be healthy and make it full term. Um, 
So I, I gave her some education. You know, Derek Prince is, you know, he listed things that are dead ringer sign for a curse, and miscarriages is one of the big things that he said is always a curse. Um, so I, I referenced her that book, Blessing or Curse You Can Choose, um, by Derek Prince. Um, so we would just agree. We command the curse to be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Every hold of the enemy, the spirit of Moloch, bound in the mighty name of Jesus. You have nothing here. She does not want <laughs> death. She wants the light of Jesus. Even in her womb. So we declare that light of Jesus to surround and protect that newborn. We command the uh, body to work with this pregnancy and not against. Lord Jesus, I just declare that you would expose the enemy, go before and expose the enemy regarding what the specific curse is regarding this. And we just agree and stand with her on this on this victory, and this blessing on this baby. We declare life, abundant life, in the name of Jesus. All right. Praise you, Jesus. All right. Um, chocolate chip had um, given us a... Um, a little update. I had missed it the last week, um, but breve kimba kara baka para sota chate pesakine peke e bena shunta. Sorry, I'm fixing my screen. <laughs> okay, I. Um, she had a coworker and. You know, I have heard her throughout the years because I've known her for a while. Uh, mention this coworker's name, but um, the coworker died, and it's just kind of like this devastatingly shocking instance. Um, so, anyhow, um, just feeling like there's a curse. And it very well could be. I was I was sharing about uh, curses, uh, area kind of curses, because um, the enemy is like a shark drawn to blood, especially the shed blood of innocence. Okay, um, so I shared area curses get anchored by the shedding of innocent blood. And, um, you know, stuff that, that can be hidden, um, war, battles, um, ethnic cleansing, slaughters for land, brutal murders, accidents, um, uh, just secret things that covens do. That's the thing. It's like once the innocent shed blood has happened, uh, like the curse can just continue, that blood cries out. And when it's often <laughs> the enemy and his servants, um, they can pray uh, to Satan, you know, and align with, with the wickedness there uh, for more stuff to happen. Um, and we know that it's the blood of Jesus that cancels that, but we have to appropriate it. We have to call on the, the blood of Jesus and, and break curses in his name and such. So um, 
I encourage her, you know, look look at the site, local history. Um, you know, I've I can remember there was a church group kind of thing, like a fellowship I was in, and we went and we prayed at somebody's house, and she she talked about you know weird things happening or whatever, and we went out in her backyard, and it was very interesting the layout of her backyard. We began to pray, and we're prayer walking. We're going around the perimeter of the property, and you know somebody would get a word of like, oh, I think something like this happened here. You know, Indians that occupied the land long ago. Things that you know you might not even be able to look up uh, on the uh, newspaper records or whatever. But that's the thing, you know, you believe, you ask the Lord, and He'll reveal all things to you. Um, so anyhow, just ask. Ask the Lord to expose anything, any um, doorways or whatever that the, the enemy uh, uses. <laughs> so um, and there's also been areas like in a city, you think, you know, Perhaps it's really not such a bad, you know, visibility or anything, but it's just really strange that there's a lot of accidents that happen there and stuff. Um, you know, I've seen testimonials of people who were, you know, in witchcraft, and they would go and they would pray on these corners or whatever um, because there was something that, that anchored, like the innocent blood or whatever, and they would begin to pray and you know, just give Satan more access, and these accidents would continue. And so, um, yeah, until a man or woman of God stands up and, and says, Lord, show me, show me the wickedness that I might pray. Show, show me that I might, might speak your name and cover, cover up everything in, in you and claim it for you everywhere my feet trod you know that kind of stuff so <coughs> um, so we will just pray for her as she discerns this Jesus we thank and praise you for you for our sister I thank you Lord Jesus that you reveal all things that you show her all things Rebecca, I thank you, Lord God, that she is a light in a very dark place. Speak the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you bless all the works of her hands, everything she does, and her witness, and even her son, Lord Jesus, that everything that they do, just explodes in your light, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that what the enemy does for evil, that you indeed turn this on its end. I just thank and praise you, Lord Jesus, that this death will spark many to search for you, Jesus. You who hold all things, I praise and thank you. Jesus, All right, let me. She also had some other things um, she had talked about last week. Um, okay, her rent is going to start to go up in March, and it's kind of. Um, Come to find out, it's kind of an unfair thing. She's actually been paying more than she should have anyway for quite a long time. And so she has a lawyer friend who is going to kind of work, you know, work with her. So, Lord God, we just, we just thank and praise you for this. We declare that your righteousness, <laughs> your righteousness trump all. We, we declare exposure of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus and we declare fairness I thank and praise you Lord Jesus not even a bunch of extra expenses that it will be settled 
that it will be settled. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, she had a blessing with a refrigerator. Awesome. Good praise report. Um, and so the whole um, job situation is of concern for her because um, I, I guess it's kind of running through the whole healthcare system. So uh, the, the security in her line of work is kind of a little wavering. So we just declare Rebecca, your hand upon her, Lord Jesus, I thank and praise you that even though there is talk of slashes everywhere, that she can stand firm because she knows that she will go where you will. And it isn't a, a disastrous thing or a thing to be fearful of or worry about or get or lose sleep over. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that your will, your mighty will be done. And Lord Jesus, if, if jobs are there, I thank you that you plan her firmly there. And she has nothing to worry about. But if you would call her on to something bigger and better, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for that open door. I thank and praise you, Lord Jesus, that you do all things uh, to bring us us who call out and cry out your name, we draw us closer to you. Amen. All right. Um, praise you, Jesus. Bless you. Okay. Um, while this wildflower. Okay, I can get get that off of there. Um, wildflower, you say there's a person coming against you that has been for years. Um, okay. Is that your daughter? Is that the same person that we were praying for? Um, yeah. Alright, well we will pray. I got my I'm really behind on the list. <laughs> the Lord God, we just pray for wildflower. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I just ask that you would go in and heal, heal those wounds, heal those violations, Lord Jesus. All things belong to you, Jesus, and we turn over all those things, all those things, all those violations, all those things over to you, Lord Jesus, for you will deal with them, Lord God. And we just lift up, uh, I believe, the daughter. Um, we, uh, we lift her up to you, Lord Jesus. We ask, Lord God, that you would just come forth. You, you, you say that uh, you know there is power in our prayers, and that when we pray for our family, that it is powerful. I thank and praise you, Lord God, for the people in my lineage that prayed for family. And I know, I know I could have fallen off the path, but I know that there were prayers of my grandparents. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you for the power in that. And so we just lift this one up, and we declare, God is going to get you. God is going to get you. And you are going to know his power. Because we declare we belong to him and our prayers avail much. And it's not going to be as in I get you, lightning bolt strike you down, but you are going to know he is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We just pray for healing and restoration in that relationship, 
We just declare a disarmament of this bitterness and the hatred and the constant attacking. We just command it down now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we just thank and praise you for Sister Wildflower and just ask that you just go in there and and uh, we just release those heavy burdens to you, Lord Jesus. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. We just speak uh, your shielding and your covering, Psalm 91, to protect over, over her and all of her possessions. We send forth your warring angels even around her property, and that's something you might want to do is to prayer walk. Brubaka, declare and claim everything for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We just declare it all. We just bind up the thief. You shall not any longer. We bind up the slanderer. You shall not any longer. In every evil work, you shall not prosper any longer in the name of Jesus. We speak love and peace. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are her shield and you are her protector. We just ask for exposure on anything, on any open doorways, on anything that, that uh, allows this to continue. And I'll share, you know, I don't, I just want to share this to share this. Um, but uh, one of the, the spiritual strongholds that I had in my past was like anger and, and its associated spirits. And uh, generationally inherited thing, you'll see that in my family line. Um, but anyhow, um, I would have a real short wick with my kids. And let me explain a little scenario um, because they behave badly, but the problem was me. <laughs> this is hard to explain, but, you know, it's something that the Lord taught me spiritually. He opened my eyes to see that it all begins with me. Um, the peace and everything has to flow from me because people pick up on the bad spiritual stuff that I was exuding. So the whole anger thing, they, they would do stuff that Satan likes to push your buttons. Yeah, Satan was, you know, working through my kids a little bit. My buttons were getting pushed. And then I was the one that would flip out. Uh, behave badly and then I'm sitting there and I'm like God why is this happening change them change them and God was showing me it's like no I'm trying to change you <laughs> and it was like the biggest ouch experience ever but that's why the spiritual house cleaning of dealing with yourself first and really examining any bad fruit that you have because um, if you have little accesses with the enemy and Satan already works through other people um, basically it's like I, some of you maybe remember that one video where it's akin to wearing a kick me sign so you're the one with the issue they are, Satan uses them to push your buttons to kick you <laughs> and then you flip out and manifest okay and then he's got gotcha, you okay and so I would continually go in this cycle of oh what's wrong you know and you know change them but I hate myself kind of thing and it, it's just vicious cycle um, but learning to you know when when you start to have thoughts or, or any little thing um, 
then that's when you start using the word and going after it and that's how you begin to purify yourself and to work on yourself you'll find as you grow in holiness and you mind your own business and you work on yourself that the kick me sign isn't up so much anymore you know Satan always try to to do stuff but then later on I would find out the kids would do something similar and I would want to flip out but I would stop myself and I would see it for what it was and I'm like no I'm not even gonna do that and then five minutes later we're all laughing and having a good time so that's kinda how that works so I wanted to share that because I just I don't know I just feel like somebody out there needs to hear it so um, so anyhow uh, God bless you with that um, and uh, yeah, we'll keep standing with you. Alright, uh, I want to pray for James. Thank you, James. Kind of a new tongue. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you would just flood your joy and your good pleasure over James. Bless my brother. Give him strength. Strength even down into the bone. I speak life into his very being. Every fiber of his muscle. I speak to his spine. And all the muscles. All the way up the nervous system and into his mind we declare that new brain in the mighty name of Jesus for nothing is impossible with you Lord Jesus any talk of virus we cast down in the mighty name of Jesus you have no authority here you have no place you have no remembrance in the mighty name of Jesus we speak that abundant life we ask for your flood of peace to shower over him I speak strength in this spring season, strength, growing strength in the mighty name of Jesus. Alright, um, was there any other prayer requests? Let me check, um, because I do have to get... Um, we are butchering rabbits today. We have we have kind of like a rabbit oper operation going on here, and, and we yeah, and chickens too. <laughs> but um, yeah, we have an order for rabbit, and so we have like a whole bunch that we have to do. And so hubby needs me uh, a bunch. Yeah. So. All right. All right. Um, I don't see anything new. Let me check Google Plus somewhere. Maybe shaking a bucket of a cut of a skipper. All right. All right. I do gotta go, but we just declare. Lord Jesus, Lord of the harvest, I thank and praise you, Lord Jesus, that uh, you send us forth, you send us out, you receive uh, the talents that you have, and we thank and praise you, Lord Jesus, that you will help us to multiply them for you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We bind up fear in the mighty name of Jesus, and we command it to go to the footstool of Jesus Christ for judgment. You have no part in our walk, no part in our day, for we are mighty and more than conquerors in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right.
Okay, you can see little Andrew's been here waiting, so I'm going to go now. I what? got one more thing to say. Rabbit tastes like chicken. Okay, rabbit tastes like chicken. <laughs> I am serious. Okay, God bless you all, and see you next week, and see Bye. you on hearinggod.proboards.com. Bless you.